Hey guys, welcome back. Um, it's time for a mid-season update, and boy, it's been a roller coaster. Um, we've faced uh, challenges. We've had to make uh, emergency signings, and um, we had some standout performances from some of our players. So uh, stick around as we dive into the highs and lows of our season so far. So we started this, the season off on a good note with uh, three victories in three games. However, during our third game against Yamaguchi, my biggest worry happened and that was that Santiago got injured. Not only was he out of that game, after the game, Bezios had to tell me that he's out for three months with a dislocated shoulder. That left me uh, having to scramble for a keeper and I ended up signing Torres, another Argentinian uh, goalkeeper. He's got the potential to be a 5-star, he's currently a 4-star, whilst uh, Santiago's already a 4.5-star. Um, but considering in my team what else I had available in my team, Torres was definitely a decent signing. It cost me about 50k, 50k from San Lorenzo. And unfortunately so far he's played 22, sorry, he's played 10 games, conceded 22 goals and only one clean sheet. Chan like uh, Santiago last season where he broke the record for a number of clean sheets. Leaves a lot to be desired, although like everything, clean sheets aren't entirely the keeper's uh, fault. <laughs> we then went on an unfortunate, putting aside the League Cup first round uh, victory. We did go on a very, very, very poor run. We went on a poor run of <laughs> it's literally 6 points in 11 games. We had one victory, a draw, a draw. Draw and a draw until I believe it was against Numasu, where I had Santiago make a comeback, even though he was a couple of days away from uh, returning. I mean, he did pass the fitness test, so I thought it was safe to play him, and we were quite, quite desperate. But he was lacking a lot of much sharpness, so I was, you know, I wasn't expecting him to be a, a miracle, you know, lifesaver for the team. But we did get a draw. I mean, we did lose 4-2 against Kofu, that was quite a hefty defeat. However, we did kind of turn the corner by winning against Tosu, drawing against Iwata, and winning against Oita 3-0. Further to this, when Santiago returned, on that same game, we had Kawasaki, our captain, getting injured with a torn calf muscle, and now he's out for three months. So. Thankfully, I do have Suzuki, who can play on the right on the right right of mid. So we do have decent cover, but Kawasaki will be sorely missed. In terms of the league, uh, after that good run of uh, last three games, we we won two and drew one. We are now currently 12, 23 points, five points away from relegation, and about eight points away from a promotion spot. Considering we were expected to be relegated, I'd like to think. But so far, so good. As long as I can stay possibly in the top half, that would be amazing. But it is still a long road ahead. We still have a second transfer window where we have to try and keep Santiago, amongst other things. Maybe I can try and find a star player in the midfield, something. I don't mind if I break the bank a bit. I do want to make an investment though in the club. Let's talk stats. So our top goal scorer has been Eto'o with 8 goals. Our highest average rating player has been Nakai, although he has not played enough. I believe he's only played like six or seven games. Our most uh, influential assister has been Kawasaki with six assists. Kai has earned most of the player of the match awards, especially when he's been scoring, you know, whenever he scored goals, he's been scoring like two goals in the game. So he automatically, you know, almost automatically becomes the player of the match. Takazawa has been influential in the midfield, but unfortunately picking up the most yellow cards. <laughs> Special mention though goes to Misao, who has been playing pretty well at the back. He, I was originally playing him as a left back, but he does prefer to play centre back. And I did have a couple of injuries at centre back throughout the first half of the season, so he's been slotting in perfectly. But he, because of his corners, even though now it's 15, it started off being 16. When it comes to corners, we have been a bigger threat, as I have seen that the actual corners get taken and land in a position where the players can attack it. Whereas before, all you'd see would be the 
the defenders just clearing it. On the managerial front, I have acquired my National Sea License. I did try and be cheeky and requested them if I could do the next course, but they told me they could not afford to right now. I do believe that my finances are not that great at the moment. And we are we will do have half a million in the bank. However, profit haven't been profits haven't been great. Hopefully that will change. I mean we are investing in the new stadium and there's payments to be made and so on. But uh, at the end of the season I'll take stock of things and I'll see if I can either, you know, find a better opportunity elsewhere or consider my options. <laughs> or even worse, maybe I get chucked out if I don't perform. <laughs> Hopefully that won't it won't come to that. <laughs> So, given the season has been a little bit of a, you know, of a rough ride with ups and downs, I do like the fact that I've ended the half of the season on a good note with the two, the two wins in three and a draw. Can we turn things around? I, I'm hoping I can at least sort of achieve a mid, mid table result. That's what I'm hoping for. Anything above, you know, anything above, let's say above ten would be a bonus if i do scrape the relegation battle i would like to think i'd be slightly disappointed with myself but hopefully it doesn't come to that and with that said stay tuned for the second half of the season until next time take care